Welcome back, one and all, to the Our Outdoors portion of your weekend. I am your host, Nick Simonson, outdoors writer with my materials online at NewsDakota.com and DakotaEdge.com. Great to be with you here as we have survived that claw clutching through the grave and out into the air as winter makes one desperate last grasp to pull us down with it. But hey, we have survived. Hopefully you have too. You're out there digging your way out or even finding those areas where a whole lot of snow did not fall. To continue your outdoor adventures and of course you will have some opportunities here if you're further west in the listening area where you're going to have those heavier snows you're going to have that white cover again obviously resetting experiencing spring all over again and getting out there fishing and enjoying your time and obviously this cuts into our turkey hunters time as well out there in the field but as always we are a stalwart bunch and we withstand these things that pop up from time to time april can be a tricky month I never shut down my snowblower until May 1st when I'm getting all my fishing stuff ready to go for the summer. So in that case, I hope you guys are able to dig out and get ready for another great season of fishing, a second spring, if you will. So hopefully you find those opportunities out there this weekend and the weeks into the future as things once again melt away and we get back to our spring activities. And one of those big spring activities, of course, is fishing on the Missouri River. There's a lot of great opportunities. And now with some reduced waters and and lowered flows, it's like a fish in a barrel scenario you've got a lot uh, less real estate for folks to be on and there's a concentration of fish particularly this time of year on the Missouri River so for all of that information we're going to catch up with Mike Peluso you see his stuff on newsdakota.com every single week giving you updates on where he's at where the walleyes are biting how the activity is on the Missouri River all summer long Lake Sakakawea as well and then of course his Devil's Lake reports in the winter too he gives us the ins and outs of what's happening on the river what he expects to come after the storm and and where we are at with walleyes. So please, stay tuned. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We're excited to have with us Mike Peluso today of Mike Peluso Outdoors. He is a guide on the Missouri River, on Devil's Lake, all over the state, looking for those walleyes and sharing that information with you on Dakota Edge Outdoors and on NewsDakota.com. Mike, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me on. It should be uh, should be interesting to see what happens with our water levels with what I'm seeing outside our window right now. Absolutely. We will keep our fingers crossed that that snow helps recharge some of the areas you fish. And let's talk about that, the Missouri River system. How have things been, obviously, ahead of our disruption in the weather, going into spring for those world-famous walleyes? You know, we, we had a little bit of a late start. Uh, ice typically goes off here around Bismarck, uh, you know, early March. Uh, I actually went off March 19th this year, so we had to you know, kind of let things settle in. But honestly, the, this past three, four weeks has been really good. It's good to see that things did pick up there after that kind of late start. Uh, what are the most effective ways, maybe take us through the spring season, on catching those walleyes when we're fishing Lake Oahe, the Missouri River, moving up to the tail race, and then, of course, into the summer, Lake Sakakawea? For me, I, I'm hard-pressed not to have a jig and a minnow in hand. I, I guess that's probably one of the funnest ways for me personally to catch a fish. And it's hard sometimes to get clients to be able to get into that cadence some, some days because they do want it a certain way. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's it's so fun when, when one of those walleyes decides to hit that thing because it's just, you know, it's electrifying. And it's I think that bite is what keeps you coming back for more. Yeah, absolutely. We know that you are a fan of that thump on the jig, and it is an effective way of getting at those fish. Obviously, right now, uh, ahead of whatever happens with this storm, the ramps along the river have been in iffy situations. What are your concerns and advice there for folks who are looking to launch on the Missouri? Well, I think the biggest thing right now is just patience. You know, a lot of these ramps only have one lane. It's really shallow getting out on some of them, and you just got to take your time. And certain people aren't going to be able to do it as fast as others so you just got to be patient with them let everybody kind of get into position and you know make sure you check it first there there are a couple that are right towards the end and if you back off too far you're going to put your wheels over the concrete and that's going to be a problem so you know walk down check it out kind of watch what everybody else is doing and uh, you'll be just fine That's right. A little patience for your fellow angler goes a long way. We're talking with Mike Peluso, fishing guide along the Missouri River. Mike, it's been referenced that on the Missouri, as you talked about, uh, it's minnow time. Minnows do really, really well, but there's a transition there where night crawlers kind of take over. Is there any truth to that? Uh, Why or why not? 
Yeah, there, there is. And I don't, I don't know what triggers it exactly, but it seems like for me, when the lilacs bloom on the Missouri river, it's time to get a, an eighth ounce jig and a half a crawler out and just start dragging that thing around. Cause it's just absolutely magical. And I, I, again, I'm not sure what really triggers that, but it is a, it's a shift. And when it, when it takes place, it's probably one of the best times in the world to get kids out because there's no, you know, real talent involved. You can just kind of let it float downstream and those walleyes just absolutely love it. So certainly that's always a fun time of year for me you know right now obviously minnows will hold strong you know for numbers of fish uh, with your random big one if you want to target a real big fish i I think your best chance if you're going to continue to jig is to put a big old plastic on and continue to chuck her up shallow up into that you know one to three foot of water along those sandbars and there's a good good chance you might uh stumble into another state record Yeah, and as we come to that topic, we've had two of those record walleyes in the last four years coming out of the Missouri River. Is there still a shot at that record falling this spring, or are we going to be waiting till that next good year class? Well, technically, we've we've had three. Uh, you know, one got disqualified here a while back. That one was a, a true monster. I, I was, you know, <laughs> when I saw that one get caught, well, it, it was technically deemed snag, but I was like, oh, boy, that one's going to be a tough record to break because I was up near 18 pounds. But judging by what I'm seeing out on the river right now, we're seeing a lot of fish in that 28 to 31-inch range. There's some fish that are pushing that, you know, 13-pound mark. Uh, I haven't seen anything bigger than that yet this spring. Definitely no... They're there. There's no doubt. I, I released one last spring. Uh, she was spawned out. It was 34 inches long. So, you know, if she's still in the river holding eggs, there's a pretty good chance that that's a state record. Everyone's on the hunt now with this little pause that we're talking about. And does this week's storm and the moisture it's going to bring, whether it's 12, 16, 24 inches of snow from Lake Sakakawea, points west and all throughout kind of western North Dakota, is that going to be enough to recharge the system and raise those water levels for a good walleye spawn? You know, I don't think it's going to hurt. I think it's going to help us. You know, certainly every time you put a little more water into the system, you know, whether it's coming out of the dam, you know, north of us, or if it's going into the river like it will be when this stuff starts to melt, it seems to trigger a movement of fish, and, and, and that pushes a lot of numbers up, you know, into the upper reaches of the Missouri River system. So certainly I'm optimistic. I, I think we're going to have a little bit of a short-term loss for a long-term gain. I, I know we need feet of water, not inches, but I, I do think this is definitely going to help. Anything right now is certainly a blessing. Uh, we kind of talked about it all winter. You know, we were getting pounded on up at Devil's Lake, and we were like, boy, wouldn't it be icing on the cake if we got another real good snowstorm late in the spring? And here it is. So I think that lake's going to go up. I think you're going to see extra water going into Sakakawea, which is good for, for myself and others that, that spent a lot of time up there. And it definitely won't hurt our Missouri River system. I, I took a drive south here last week on one of my wind uh, cancellation days just to check out all the boat ramps, basically from Bismarck all the way to the state line and you know for a lack of a better term it was very depressing so this will definitely be a shot in the arm for a lot of these areas for hopefully a long-term gain we're looking forward to that and as you mentioned mike you were on devil's lake this winter guiding for those folks who are looking towards the spring and summer of walleye fishing up there how is the fishery looking headed into 2022 I think it's pretty good. I, you know, we caught a lot of fish this winter. We started off really, really well. Uh, perch were kind of exceeded our expectations early on. And, uh, you know, the walleye bite was strong towards the end. So I, I think it's going to be pretty good. I, I think with the extra water going into that system, you know, you're going to see a lot more fish being caught in those northern lakes, you know, whether it's you know, Irving, uh, Alice, Mike's, Dry, all of them. I, I think they're going to do pretty well. They were doing pretty well up in those areas this winter. So certainly, you know, anytime you get moving water in that, system it it just fires it right back up and it should hold real well for for the spawn and and you know again up there you know they don't spend a lot of you know resources stocking devil's lake so i I think if we can get a nice strong year class of uh, both a a perch northern and walleye spawn it, it should do wonders for that lake as well absolutely wrapping up here with mike peluso of mike peluso outdoors fishing guide throughout north dakota for those trophy walleyes mike when folks are looking to fish dl this summer uh what are some of the targets that they should look for in terms of structure depth and those kind of things well early on definitely uh you know look to be casting up into the shallows anything that's wind swept uh, seems to produce pretty well and then you kind of go through a lull there where the water's pretty clear and then, you know it takes a little bit for the water to warm up and you get a little bit of an algae bloom that's where we spend a lot of time uh, bobber fishing it seems like you get the bobbers away from the boat and, you know some of the wood structure and you'll, you'll catch a lot of fish early on that way and then again it's almost like a, a light switch goes off up there as well it's, it's kind of like the river with the crawler bite but 
uh, those fish transition again and you put a, a bottom bounce or a spinner or a bottom bounce with a slow death on it and it's hang on tight so you know it's just a great place to fish it's a number system where you know expect to catch a lot of fish yeah, good to hear that DL is still staying up in the upper echelons of walleye fishing. And then uh, if you can share or, or if no one will beat you up too much over it, you got any sleeper lakes out there, lakes where some big walleyes might be lurking or a limit in your mind is a lock for folks looking to get out there? Yeah, there's a few. The problem you're going to have is getting on them this summer. There, there's no access. So those ones are pretty tough for me to even, you know, disclose. But one of the best lakes I feel in North Dakota and it's starting to become very popular. I, I call it the Mini Devils Lake in North Dakota, and that's Irving just to the just to the east of us here in Bismarck. And it's incredible what that lake produces year in and year out. And I don't think it's going to be any different this year. Great to have that out there, and obviously folks can do their research and find out where to go. Mike, we thank you for all your efforts out there and sharing the updates and reports on a weekly basis. And most importantly, thanks for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoy it. So some great information there from Mike Peluso at MikePelusoOutdoors.com and, of course, at NewsDakota.com every week, giving you his insight on where our walleyes are at throughout the many great fisheries here in North Dakota. So as this storm subsides and things get back to normal, whatever that might be this spring, I hope you have a chance to get out there and hook up with old marble eyes and make sure to take a kid with you. And if you do, I'll see you in our outdoors.